Hey, you going? I just used this car to run over a whole family of children. But all of that could have been avoided if this car was just fitted with an old-fashioned invention that doesn't exist anymore. So today, I'm gonna remake this device and test its effectiveness, and then invent something of my own. <laughs> It'll hopefully allow car owners to keep pedestrians safe, while also not taking away the joy of running them over. Now, looking at the history of vehicles in Australia, more people than ever are choosing to drive American-style pickups. Sales in June were up 85% on the same period last year. Workers remanufacture around 1,200 trucks a month. And these cars are bigger, heavier, less fuel efficient, and they're just ruining the flow of roads. And with the marketing surrounding these trucks, pushing the image that they are essential vehicles for a strong, modern, manly man that loves to drive on a dirt road once a year, it's no wonder insecure dickheads keep buying these giant American-style youths. Like me, when I bought this stupid thing. And with even more powerful engines resulting in even longer braking times, it's almost like they are trying to produce death machines, which might actually be their agenda. Because if you buy a big car that's more likely to injure people in small cars, the people in small cars then want to get a bigger car to stop you killing them. And then it turns into an arms race to buy bigger and bigger vehicles. And this cycle continues until everyone is just driving in M1 Abrahams. And the stats on pedestrian vehicle deaths are pretty shocking. If you own a ute like this, you are 80% more likely than any other driver to hit a pedestrian. And when you do hit someone, you are 50% more likely to kill them. But why? And maybe you think it's because they are heavier, faster, or that because the owners are more likely to be wankers. And these are all true, but the biggest factor is actually the grill height. When I've run over a family of children in a normal car with a low grill, you typically hit them in the legs and then throw them up onto the bonnet, distributing a lot of the energy. But with cars like this that have a grill height of 1.2 meters, unless I am running over Yao Ming, most people, especially children, are gonna take the full impact straight into their vital organs. Also, because you're higher, you can't even see if a child walks in front of your car, which this lady nicely demonstrates by running over eight children. And this is happening more and more, and people with higher grills are way more likely to run over their own children. So my device is going to have to stop this, and I think these forgotten inventions might just do that. And they were introduced when cars first appeared on the road, when people didn't know how to drive, and pedestrians didn't know how to walk. And kept stepping in front of cars, and they were killed in shocking numbers, almost at a similar level to today. So instead of slowing down, people came up with this thing, which pops out like an umbrella catching the person safely, which seems to work. And there are a couple of versions I've seen. Another has this bumper which pops up so the pedestrian can grab onto it so they don't get flung onto the road. Or this one with a net. And that man definitely has a concussion. But I'm gonna go with the umbrella version as that man seemed the least hurt. And that way, when I do hit you, you'll be placed gently inside this soft hammock. And then I can just apologize and drive you to work. All right, the first thing I need to do is figure out how to get it to pop out quickly. And I don't have a plan. So I'm just gonna start welding pieces of metal together and see where I end up. And I've actually had some of you comment on videos when I'm welding, asking if their eyes can get damaged by staring at me welding on camera without a mask which is so incredibly stupid. You can't, I'm the only one at risk here. So once that was done, I bunged a spring on and now I've got a great way to whack myself in the head. Then I just welded up another one and then checked if they get in the way of each other. And I'd like to say I planned this, but somehow they don't rub or touch each other at all. Similar to your parents. And they also spring out nicely, which means I can do the same on the other side. And by me, I mean my mate Ruben, who was learning to weld. And I was sick of burning my eyes welding, so I thought it'd be funny for his first ever weld to be criticized by millions of people online. I mean, looks exactly the same as mine. <laughs> but somehow his welds look equally as bad as mine. Then I just cut out some more metal for the swinging arms on the other side. and then attach them with springs and gave it a test to see if I'm on the right track with this concept. Okay, three, two, one. I want so 
That looks pretty great. And I almost sliced my femoral artery. It's not quite as fast as the ones from the video, but everything in old films always looks faster and sped up. All right, now that I got the frame, I need to figure out how I'm making the fabric sail. And I was gonna use my bed sheet, but since I only have one, I'm gonna use this canvas tarp. And I don't really know the best way to do this. So I just kind of scrunch the material around the poles in the way I want it to sit and then safety pinned it all down and then sewed the hell out of it. And for this, I'm using a specific sewing technique for thick materials called the whipping ratchet stitch. And if you haven't heard of that, don't worry, I just made it up. And this is the first one I sewed, which looks pretty good. But then someone must have snuck in at night while I was sleeping and sewed the rest as they got progressively worse and worse. But I think they should still be strong enough. Also, while I was attaching the fabric, I found another thing I need to work out. If I drive into someone with this current setup, it won't do anything, as the poles would just collapse down, failing to stop the pedestrian from hitting the car. And at first, I considered making a ratchet on each arm so it locks their arms in place wherever they stop. But after I destroyed every spanner in my house, I realized this was way too much work and that it might not even support the load. But then I spotted the perfect thing in my garage. this door with this spring-loaded latch. And luckily, I don't need to destroy my door to access this technology. And I just bought some of these gate locks, which I ground into a bevel and welded on. And now when the arm swings out, it passes over this side of the bolt, pushing it down, and then it pops up, locking the arm into place. So I just welded three more into place. And once I put the fabric back on, I was about to jump into it to see if it can hold my weight, but realized another thing I've done wrong. I stupidly left the end of the pole sharp, which is just gonna rip through the canvas. So I put duct tape on the end and then cut out these little tabs to clamp the sheet down with, which should increase the surface area of the attachment points. And it should be done, but I'm still not gonna test it with my body weight, as I'd prefer that if it breaks and goes catastrophically wrong, that it happens on the car at speed. Okay, next I need to make the release mechanism. And to do that, I'm gonna use my new favorite thing, these quick release things, which will allow me to open this without running away and slicing an artery. And my idea is to use this elastic, which will wrap around the poles and the fabric. And then when I pull the string, All right, hopefully that still works while there is a sheet on it with air resistance pushing up against it. But before I go any further, I wanna tell you about the sponsor of the video, Odoo. Odoo is an all-in-one management software that provides entrepreneurs like me and you with a range of applications to make day-to-day -day management of their business way easier, including invoicing, accounting, website creation, and more. It's all here just in one place. And you can start off using the apps that your business requires. Let's say I wanna make an e-commerce store to sell amazing American cars. All I have to do is follow four simple steps, starting with choosing online store for manufacturer of business, then choosing one of the color palettes, adding the pages and features I want, and last step, getting a beautiful theme from these three options. Odoo Website Builder uses AI to build you a beautiful online store that's ready to customize. And you get all this for free since your first Odoo application is free for life with unlimited hosting and support. They also offer free personalized domain name for one year. It's so easy to create your online store and you don't need any technical skill. Let's say I want to sell accessories for cars. I just click on new at top right, type the product name, and let's say I'm selling alloy wheels for 70 bucks and done. Now I can just drag and drop blocks to make this page more appealing, add images and description of the product. So go check out my link in the description to get started for free with Odoo today. Okay, that's done. Now I need to work out how I'm attaching it to my car, which probably should have been my first step. But lucky for me, the car has these hooks underneath, which I think are there to pull the car off pedestrians when it runs them over. And I'm gonna use them. Now, at first I thought I was gonna put a metal pole in there and then just bolt it on and then attach it like that. But then I thought, no, if this bends down while I'm driving and catches the road, the metal pole is gonna get shot straight through the car suspension, through the driver's compartment and into my cock. So instead I'm gonna use wood. My logic here is that the wood is weaker than the metal it's attached to. So hopefully it snaps before it does any real damage to the car or me. I just hope my insurance company isn't watching this. Okay, I made this shield thing, which I bolted in with U-bolts and it's made out of polycarbonate, which is thick enough to stop a bullet. So hopefully it stops the mannequin from damaging the car. 
then I just put the pedestrian catcher on the front. And as soon as I put on the pedestrian catcher, I noticed that the wood bends a lot under the weight. So I invented something I've never seen before, this round thing, which I'm calling a uniform diameter rotary transporter, which should support the weight. Now, before I go and test this on the road, I want to try my own brand new, maybe life-saving solution. Cars have airbags inside to protect passengers, so why not have them on the outside to protect pedestrians? Surely, pedestrian lives will be saved if just before an impact, a nice soft pillow pops out for them to sleep on. And I managed to get these four airbags, which was surprisingly hard. And I found out after being turned away by multiple mechanics that it's illegal for them to sell large quantities of airbags to individuals without a proper reason. But luckily, I found a guy that didn't want to be named out west that did an under the table cash deal. Thank you for hood. So I'm gonna have the airbags attached here and then just before I hit the pedestrian, there's gonna be a pressure plate which sets off the airbag. But before I go out on the streets and test it, I have to set one of these off just to know they work with this baby. And I couldn't get it to work. Either Fahud gave me broken airbags or there's a safety mechanism here that's been removed to stop idiots like me playing with it. Which might be the case as it looks like these pins need to be pushed into another contact plate to work. And I considered buying some proper connection points but got lazy and decided to just play around with the placement of the wires and hooked them up randomly. Also this time I'm going to put these awesome stickers on that measure G-force and they are the same ones used by the Mythbusters and I mean exactly the same ones. I stole them from Jamie Heineman. So we got 25 G's, 50 G's and 100 G's and generally 100 G's is fatal. And I guess that's why the government restricts babies from driving cars. So it's time to test all of this out. And I need somewhere with a long road and no one around. And luckily, one of my subscribers is a hoon. And he told me about an abandoned highway, which they may or may not use for drag racing, which is perfect for this test. Except on the way in, we set off an alarm. So we've probably got an hour or two until the cops turn up. So we tried to be quick and attach the shield first and then the tires. What, what do you think is gonna happen? I think it's gonna shatter. What's happening? Both, both wheels are turning. The wheels are turning. Um, yeah, they seem a bit jumpy. That's fine. Then once the tires seemed like they were working, we attached the pedestrian catcher and gave it a stationary test. There's so many f things about this. Like what? Like the fact that there's no like actual management for the fabric. So if a bit of it comes out while you're driving and catches something on the ground, like I don't know any what's going to happen. Okay, stand exactly where you are. Were you going to hit me? No, no, no. Okay, move back, move back. Okay, please work. That's going to be sick. Otherwise we came out here for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, why am I laughing? I'm here for no reason as well. Come on, you f <laughs> And it's not opening. And in my test at homes, I forgot that the fabric would be way more bunched up and it's just getting caught on itself. So I decided to just lock it open and hit the mannequin with the G4 stickers and see if this whole thing works at all. That's recording. Still feels like a good idea. Yeah, I'm quite scared. And then... Oh, and you can't do any sharp turns. <gasps> what? You can't do any sharp turns in this thing. Those wheels at the front don't turn. Oh, that's making weird movements. Yeah, it's of course, because the wheels you got on there don't turn. It's just kind of scraping against the ground and fighting against the rest of your car. Yeah, but let me ask you this. But you, you, you just ran over another wheel. What? You drive forward a bit. A wheel? Did a wheel fall off? Of course it fell off, actually. There's two screws in it. There's a wheel on the road. I ran over a wheel? Yeah, we wheel, one of the wheels, both wheels fell off. We're <laughs> <laughs> They're both just gone. <laughs> Wait, you drove like two centimeters an hour. <laughs> What's that weird noise? <laughs> it's me driving. Alex, you know what? I think the I think the wheels are gonna work. Yeah, yeah I think it's a good idea. Well, this, this is fine. This is fine. Let's do it. What, what's the worst? Look how much that's hanging down. If that catches, we're fucked. You were getting impaled. No, no, we're not getting impaled. Okay, let's do this. Well, that's the only thing that's going to break. 
That's a good omen. That's the only thing that's going to break today. Yeah, you film forward. Okay. Yep. I'll send you after the fact. Ready, set. Hey, what are you doing? I think I got 50 k's. Oh! Fuck. Well, your thing's immediately broke it. <laughs> Ay, 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 ay. Wait, how did the music just turn? <laughs> Why is it immediately broken? Oh. What is that smell? Did I just ruin my car? I mean, the mannequin's disappeared. It's. <gasps> No, 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 that's the American. <laughs> oh, oh, wait, something's leaking. I've done some serious damage to my car. Oh, f Come to the car. <gasps> oh, no. What the f Holy sh Some red stuff's coming out. Well, you're gonna drink it. It. That's the coolant. Okay, we done. <sighs> Straight well, I'm weak. Up. <laughs> um. Holy. Probably this. Why did I let Ruben film some of the wells? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing would go wrong. I thought that would be funny. It was the first time weld. Well, what happened to the dummy? Let's actually let's just finish the experiment. A hundred G's dead. Yeah. Twenty five G's. Dead. And my car. Dead. <laughs> and we thought it might have been Ruben's first time weld that had snapped and punctured the car. But after finding the mannequin leg covered in blood, it was definitely my fault. Wait, it's covered in, in coolant. It looks like blood. <laughs> and the mannequin stand bounced underneath the car. And you can even see it lifts the car up, puncturing something important and denting the frame. What else is there? Look at that f***ing dent in the frame. And after chatting to Ruben on the phone, we figured out that it was the transmission and all the useful fluid it needs to survive was gone. This is the fluid like water or is it like a bit viscous? It's a bit viscous. Yeah, I'd say it's probably power steering fluid or like transmission, but your transmission would Gotta be fast. In metal, so. Transmission would be the gears if I just don't change. Is that the what gears? Then you can't drive home in first. No, no, I'm not gonna drive home. I'll drive it out of here and then we'll have to get Ubers home, Alexa. Yeah, yeah. Now, we pretty quickly worked out that we were not driving out of here, even if we wanted to, as there was no more liquid left in the transmission and the car was locked in park. Okay. That's not a good noise. It's on. Service vehicle shift malfunction, service required. Well, you've got the service button which is like a very low drama way wait, of wait, saying wait. you destroyed your car. I th no, I think maybe it's a coincidence and maybe, maybe my car's just due for a service. Oh yeah. Went straight back wait, to park. Wait, we have to walk all the way back. <laughs> the worst, worst possible. I mean, the worst possible thing is- Well, we die. We die. Yeah. This is probably almost the same. Well, we just have to walk a long way, which is kind of like going to heaven. Yeah, I guess. And this sucks. And after a long 30 minute walk talking to 12 different mechanics that were all trying to palm the job onto someone else, made more complicated by the fact that I didn't want to tell them that I had purposely driven into a metal spike. I have had something shot up and pierce my transmission fluid pan. We finally managed to get in touch with a tow truck that would be there in three hours. So, hey, my Uber's here, see you later. While Alexa was driving away, I couldn't help but feel disappointed. Firstly, because my device failed so easily, but mostly that I didn't get to let off the airbags, which I was so excited to do. But as if on cue, a cop showed up and did a lap of the road we were just on, making me feel a whole lot better about not illegally letting off a bunch of airbags down there. Then eventually the tow truck pulled up and pulled my bleeding car filled with dismembered mannequins and explosives to the mechanic. 
You may also be thinking that I just wasted the last month creating the most useless thing I've ever made. But I would argue that in a way, it was actually very successful. And I exceeded my wildest dreams of what was possible. And I created the most successful pedestrian catcher ever. A device capable of completely destroying a 2.5 ton car in seconds. And if everyone just walked around with a mannequin stand on them at all times, there would be no big cars left on the road and the world would be a pedestrian utopia. Thank you so much for watching. If you like that, please subscribe and check out some of my other videos.